We've got another moon mission coming up. Fascinating, isn't it? They're, they're going also to announce... fascinating how long it's, it's been. Um... Well, we've been sending probes. Initially, yeah. we sh it, it's sort of like Earth-bound discovery over the last, whatever, 17,000 years, where our technology got good enough that we could just barely get somewhere. But then the technology kept getting better until it was a place that we could live. And, you know, the first people came here, what, 70,000 years ago because they had the technology at the time to be able to cross the straits to the north. And over time, then, uh, we've moved all over the surface of the Earth, but we're now at the stage in history where our technology is good enough and safe enough and the cost is cheap enough that we could start to have people permanently living on the moon. And they're going to announce the first crew going to the moon, I think, next week, April 2nd or 3rd. They're going to yeah. announce the next people going. That'll be a huge moment for the whole There's guess, going to be a Canadian on that crew. I'm Canadian, so I'm pretty excited about that. Good to hear. Does it also almost put into perspective how incredible it was that mankind got to the moon in 1969 because it was so much could have gone wrong. Oh, and lots the fact did that go wrong. was successful is actually the incredible thing, not that we're only just now saying that it's easily achievable enough to sort of base people there. The computer in the lunar lander that came down and landed on the surface of the moon had uh, 8K of memory. 8K, you know, that's smaller than an email most of the time. And that was all the memory to be able to help that crew fly down to the surface. And obviously Apollo 13 and all the Gemini flights, enormous problems. But the, the cleverness of people, the ability to plot and scheme and come up with solutions, that's what carried the day there. And hopefully now our technology is a little better so that we yeah. can bring more people and you don't just have to be a professional astronaut to travel in space. The significance of that 8K versus most of the useless emails we send <laughs> and read That's every right. single day That's really true. puts one's life into perspective. Yeah. Another fascinating uh, moment is the US-Russia shared commanding or, or alternating commanding of the space station because we know where relations are right now. Um, and without delving into all of that, no, I've, I've the cooperation continues? I, I was NASA's director in Russia. I, I, was, I lived in Russia for five years and speak the language, and their current leadership is, is horrific. It, you know, it's a war crimes kind of leadership, but that doesn't mean everybody in the country is complicit. It's, it, they're a big, messy organization just like Australia, like Canada. Um, what they're doing is regrettable, but meanwhile, anybody in Australia can walk out and watch the space station go over at dusk and at dawn. I've flown over the country thousands of times and we still have peaceful daily for the last 30 years, every single day, working together, 15 countries, including Russia and the United States and Canada, mm -hmm. um, trying to lay the groundwork for exploring the rest of the universe. And I think it's a wonderful visible example that not everything is bad and that we can do well together. Yeah, you've still got that human to human realisation. Just finally, what is it like? So you said you, you're flying over Earth all these times. You sort of wake up and I guess you don't roll over in space, but you look out the window and think, wow, where, look where I am. Look, I wonder what part of Earth that is down I've there. I've been around the world 2,650 times, Tom. <laughs> and even the last time when I was floating at the window of the space station, on my last vi mission, I was still that same wow okay. you just mentioned. It is a magnificent early taste of the rest of the universe and I'm so lucky to have had a chance to go see it in person. We're very lucky you came in today. Really appreciate uh, all your experiences today and uh, enjoy Australia as well. How could you not? Thank you. Chris Haddon.